Buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Monday here on this show. You know what that means? we got Monday Night Raw coming up tonight. And we have a lineup for the show, which is, it's now, it's now, I could say it every week. It ain't going to be changed because there isn't some bloke coming in ripping up the script. Although, there may be a change. And as of about an hour ago, there was expected to be a change. But I don't think the news is out yet, so I don't want to say anything in case things change. But I believe that the, uh, the cursed side of the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship bracket. I think there's about to be yet another change. So uh, we'll talk about that, uh, what we can here on the show today. We've also got notes on Jeff Jarrett. He's gone from WWE. He is done. We'll tell you about that. Big E talked about uh, day-to-day life with his broken neck, his healing broken neck, and whether or not he is cleared to return. we got some G1 notes and... Uh, Notes for some NJPW shows coming up down the road. And what Okada has to say about a lot of things. Oh, boy. Then, of course, we have the full reviews of Rampage and SmackDown. Excellent match on SmackDown. The five way to determine the number one contender to Gunter's title, which is going to be Sami Zayn. Or no, it won't be Sami Zayn. Uh, it's going to be uh, Sheamus. But Sami Zayn was the star of that match because they were in uh, Montreal. He was massively over as a baby face. And they returned to Canada. I guess not return. They remain in Canada for the show tonight. Trish Stratus will appear on the show. And we got a lot of other stuff to talk about as well. So big day here in the program. If you want Texas, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Got a lot to get into today. Raw is tonight. We have got Alexa Bliss and Asuka versus Dakota Kai and Io Sky in a women's tag team title semifinal match. Edge will be facing Damian Priest, and we will have an appearance by Trish Stratus. That is the lineup for the show here tonight. And uh, we'll see what more we can talk about later on here in the program. But uh, I, I think there's going to be yet another change to the tournament. It has not been uh, 100% confirmed, but it has absolutely been discussed in WWE, and I think it's happening. But we will uh, find out maybe before the show is over here today. But that's the uh, lineup for Raw. More, of course, to be added. And uh, hopefully it's a good show, because you know what? SmackDown was a really good show on Friday. I know some of you still don't want to hear this. And in fact, I talked in the opening segment about how awesome that uh, that five-way was. They had a five-way match. Winner gets a shot at Gunter at the Clash at the Castle. And Sami Zayn was so incredibly over. Place going crazy for him. He looked awesome. But then they have uh, Sheamus go over. And... I immediately, I immediately had the blowback. Ah, nothing's changed. Guy loses in his hometown. Well, first off, he didn't get pinned. Someone else got pinned. He was made to look like a hero. And on top of that, it's not going to be Sami Zayn and Sheamus or Sami Zayn and Gunther at the pay-per-view. They didn't want to do that match. Now, if you want to argue he shouldn't have been in that match, listen, if you want to argue that, you can, but I wouldn't even argue that this time because he was so great in that match. And they're clearly doing a storyline involving him, Roman Reigns, the Usos, and uh, Drew McIntyre, which is yet to play out. But I, I would not watch anything that happened in that match and go, oh, nothing has changed. They had 22 minutes. They had a great, great match. And I don't care what anyone says. I cannot wait to see Sheamus and Gunther Pound the hell out of each other at that castle. Hell yeah. For 20 minutes at the pay-per-view. Damn right. And my God, that's the problem with people that have the ability to respond instantly to something without taking everything in. Because I can imagine that you got bombarded with tweets and texts and such that 
oh, my God, look what they did. They buried him in his own town with all those people around him, and it's Quebec and this and that. And it's like, just wait till the end of the show. Then you could maybe cast your judgment on things. It's not like, you know, somebody else getting beat in their hometown. He's tied in with Roman Reigns, and we know the Usos aren't there, and we know Drew McIntyre is still left to come, you know? That's the problem with instant reactions to things like that. There was also an incredible segment with Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. I loved this segment with all my heart. And then somebody emailed me, and uh, and they were right. They said, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of those skits they used to do in the early 2000s with Kurt Angle and Steve Austin backstage. (laughs) And they're absolutely right. It was exactly like that. These two, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn together in this segment— it was so great. And the best part of it actually was Sami Zayn just starts burying uh, Jey Uso because Jey Uso is always mean to him. And he's burying him. And he's talking about how he just yells at him. And I can't remember the exact line that he said, but as soon as he said it, he realized, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. And he goes quiet. And then he's, he's about to explain himself, but then he realized, uh, there's no use. He's not grateful. And he's, he's all, not being grateful. oh, yeah, he's not being grateful. Yeah, And, and then he agreed. realizes, oh, man. And so he's all, he gets quiet and then, He's going to say something he can't say, and he just puts his head down. He's just waiting to die. And then Roman Reigns looks over, and he goes, you know, you're right. And as soon as he said that, like, Sammy's eyes go white, and you could just hear the crowd go, oh, like they couldn't believe it. Like, oh, my God, Roman likes Sammy. (laughs) This was so great. This segment was awesome. I don't know where they're going with it, but uh, it has been an ongoing storyline. Roman Reigns, the Usos, and really Sammy Zayn and Jey Uso are the two that have been at odds. Jimmy's just kind of hanging around. So we'll see uh, We'll see where it goes. But I like SmackDown a lot. I'll review it with Filthy yeah. later on today. You know, there's there are talents that would be better suited in AEW. There are talents that would be better suited in New Japan. And there are talents that would be better suited in WWE. And there were a lot of people that were really hoping that Kevin Owens, when all the news about his contract being up, that he would be one of the ones that would jump over to AEW and be back with the Young Bucks again and be with this person and be with that person. And it's like, you know, if I'm Kevin Owens, for a lot of different reasons, not the least of which is I am a hero when I go to one province that my company has got a lock on. And I know that they just signed a deal, Dynamite did, to be on RDS up in Quebec, but they are the two biggest, I would assume, stars in all of Canada, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And they walk up there, they are conquering heroes, and they have been used well by WWE. So, you know, there's a lot of people who would be better fits in certain places. And after I got done watching on Friday, it was a reminder to me that not only Kevin Owens, but Sami Zayn is actually in the best place he really could be in. You know, when Vince uh, when Vince was booted and there was all this talk about, my God, who will replace Vince McMahon? And Hunter was not in the role yet. And people were thinking, oh, God, who's it going to be? Like uh, Pritchard or... The name that came up was maybe Jeff Jarrett. And it was like, oh my God, how the how the world of wrestling, this soap opera, how things, how this great circle of wrestling turns. Well, Hunter's in charge, and Jeff Jarrett's gone. Jeff Jarrett's reportedly gone from WWE. PW Insider reported on Sunday, Jarrett, who held the position of senior vice president of live events, had departed his position. The belief was he finished his duties that past Friday. Although they were not sure of the specific timeline, he's been in and out of WWE since 2019 for serving as a producer, a member of the creative team, exited the company during the COVID-19 pandemic, returned in his current role in May. He appeared at SummerSlam. Remember, he was a referee of the Usos and the Street Profits? Mm -hmm. For God only knows what reason. Then he showed up for Ric Flair's last match. (laughs) Pretty much outworked everybody in the ring. No. Well, I don't know about that, but... Uh, well, he was close. He was very good in that match. Yeah. And uh, then, earlier this year, made an appearance at Game Changer Wrestling's first Oh, pay-per-view. my God, and this whole thing, all of Effie. this hullabaloo. Now he's gone. To not do a job to Effie. He went through all of this. Look how much well, money... Well, he can now. 
Jeff Jarrett is is a hero of mine when it comes to professional wrestling. The ultimate survivor, a guy who I always liked. Who, yeah, he was pushed too hard at certain times in WCW and for some people's taste in the WWF. But I've always really liked Jeff Jarrett. And talk about the ultimate survivor of pro wrestling. He really is, and the fact that he's been able to. Just be everywhere this year is a true testament to him. So an amazing worker. I guess he's done with whatever he they're doing there. I guess he figures maybe it's too much. But, uh, yeah, I have a feeling we're not uh, probably have heard the last of Jeff Jarrett with something doing with professional wrestling, maybe even the WWE down the line. Big E says doctors are not worried about him leading a normal life. He is still not clear to wrestle. He's been recovering from the broken neck suffered on March 11. He appeared on Out of Character recently, said essentially the issue right now is my C1 is not completely ossifying, not completely forming into bone. It appears to be healing fibrously, so it's kind of contained enough. I'm not a medical expert. I'm going to butcher all these terms. But it's good enough that they're not worried about me in day-to-day life. I don't need the brace anymore. They took surgery off the table. I would be cleared to live a normal life. Man, I hope so. Cleared to live a normal life. I'm clear to live a normal life, but I'm not clear to be taking off and eating suicide spears and taking back bumps. Nature of what we do is very physical, involves your neck and your spine. I would like to keep that as intact as possible. So uh, they're going to basically wait, and at the one-year mark, they're going to do more scans and uh, find out how things are going. It's got no nerve issues. No tingling, no weakness. They told me as long as your neck is in the brace, as long as you stay in the brace, you're good for that. I've been working out. I feel great. I'm just really grateful. So uh, that's the update on Big E. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Well, we got New Japan Declaration of Power, which is not coming up until October 10th. Took quite a ways. We have got Jay White Tamatanga. For the IWGP World Heavyweight title, Okada versus Jonah, and more matches to be announced. So we have two matches. The same amount of matches that have been announced for All Out 4. Okada spoke at a press conference after oh. winning the G1. Oh, yeah. You knew this was coming. You knew this was coming. He said, right, I want to elevate the prestige of the G1 Climax Tournament. And to elevate the G1, I think you have to elevate the status of the contract that comes with it. I don't need an answer to this right away, but I do feel that for winning this tournament, for bringing the energy and the fire all the way through the G1, the winner should be in the main event at the Tokyo Dome, representing as the G1 champion. That's a stance that I would like to take as I head to Wrestle Kingdom. I think the idea of being the rights holder is strange. I'm saying I will be in the main event against the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. So if you want to be in that spot, then rather than come for me, you should go for the belt. But if anyone has a debt they want repaid, a receipt they want to give, then they're more than welcome to face me in a special singles match without the rights on the line. Thank you, Okada. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Ghetto, for moving this Tokyo Dome back to one day. Well, not his choice, but yeah. Not his choice. Whoever's no. choice it was, they made the right call. <laughs> that would be the fans because not enough of them have been showing up. And well, you know good. what? One night, one night is going to be good. In fact, it's probably going to be probably pretty great. It's going to be awesome. You're not going to split all the great matches among two nights. Yeah. You're not going to have this deal where it doesn't matter who wins the G1. You can lose the case. You can win the case. You can headline on night two. You, Bro, the G1 and one night of the Tokyo Dome. That's the way to do it. And that means New Japan Road, or what's the uh, with the show that's right after it on the 5th, the Oda Ward show, like that makes that show even more pivotal now, too. It usually is anyway to see some, you know, changes in the air coming out of the Tokyo Dome. But it really actually has some impact and significance now, too, because any Americans or any foreigners that go over... They're going to probably be on those two shows if, you know, it, it, maybe everybody's not on the fifth, but it's going to be a really important show and maybe setting the tone for what we see here in the States, whether it be through New Japan Strong or whether it be through other outlets. Lenny says, so now the briefcase isn't defended and the title will be barely defended in the lead up to the Dome. Oh, God. Yes, you're right. You're right. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And That's exactly what happened for like 30 years. 
Damn right. And it worked out fine for 30 years. Yeah. And then uh-huh. they mucked it all up for the last four years. Well, now. That's, and now that's... they're fixing it again. Well, look, they're doing the right thing here. And this has been the year of Okada channeling all of the greats from New Japan past, including not the least of which is Inoki, and his ability to face an evil foreigner, somebody coming over with arrogance and cockiness, you know, putting fear in people. Jay White is the one who fills that role now. To have Okada not mess around with anything else, have matches that matter, have time with his newborn child whenever that happens, perfect. Leads you right into the dome. It means something. There are so many title matches, and that was one of the things that was going to happen over time with New Japan. Hiroki Goto was the biggest victim of more IWGP championship matches because he would win, he would get to a certain point, and he would lose because they were having more of these matches. And I'm for more IWGP title matches, not as many as maybe we have here in the States. You know, it's constant title flips, although... Again, with Roman Reigns and how it has been in AEW, times have been a little bit different. But bottom line, you know, these guys and that title should mean something. And you have all these other title matches throughout the year. You have them here in the States. You have them great. But the lead into the Dome should mean something. The same way the lead into WrestleMania should mean something. And once the Royal Rumble is over, the same way once the October show is over, yes, you have the New Japan World Tag League in there to fill time. But when it comes to the most important things, I think we can have a two, two and a half month build to a major match on a major show, your biggest one of the year. That's the way, in my opinion, it should be. Let's see. If you were Triple H, would you put the titles on McIntyre to suck the air out of the room before All Out the next day? What does that mean? You trying to tell me you don't think Drew McIntyre would be a good champion? I'd be 100% happy with Drew McIntyre winning that title at Clash of the Castle. So I'm not sure what your question is. Like, yeah, I think it's going like, to be such it. a news yeah, thing that it's going to suck away the attention from all. Like, nothing. Once All Out kicks in on Sunday... Uh, to me, there's no question. It's still going to be a big show. And people may compare the two more. People may be planting their flags more by the time that it's over. But I don't think there's going to be too much that's going to take the attention away once Sunday comes. Person says, given I'm sure he was given permission to do it, do you think WWE let go of Double J because he was part of Ric Flair's last match? No. WWE had a camera crew there. Charlotte was there. I mean, he, and besides, his contract allowed him to do that. His contract allowed him to do outside appearances. So I would, I would, I don't know for sure, but my guess would be that had zilch to do with it. This person here says, uh, the moment where hit unless row- Unless, Brian, you, you look at it from the aspect of he likes that life and maybe he doesn't want the responsibility and all that tying down of what you would have to deal with from a corporate, especially a company that may be in flux right now as far as things moving in the office and things like that as people settle in and all that sort of stuff. So maybe it's just a matter of, hey, I like doing what I'm doing. I can be involved in wrestling and do so much and not have to be tied down. Well, my point was he can do all of those things even with his WWE job. He was allowed no, to but, do indies yeah, and make a true, lot of money but, from WWE at the same time. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, again, I don't know what the exact nature of his role was, but it was about, you know, promoting and doing live events, wasn't it? So unless it was kind of an ambassadorship role, I mean, it, that's got to be somewhat time consuming to try to coordinate and do things and have that be done on the regular. Hearing how over Sami Zayn was on Friday reminded me of when he was the hottest babyface in NXT, hoping we see Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos. Well, you know, Kevin, uh, Sami Zayn, is a, he does a great job as a heel, but he's never been as great as he was when he was a babyface in NXT. And one of, the, uh, one of the first things that Triple H did when he came back was start turning people that were miscast. And Becky Lynch was, was one of them. And I'm not saying that Sammy is miscast because he does a good job as a heel. And obviously he was super over because he was in Montreal. Who knows about the rest? But, I mean, the guy's so great that he'd be a fantastic babyface. And if if Kevin Owens is going to feud with Roman Reigns again, well, it depends on whether they think that uh, Roman's going to be beat, booed or not. 
I mean, he's cheered virtually everywhere he goes. He showed up on SmackDown in that car, and the place just went crazy when he got out. So I'd be happy with uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos, but I don't know what they're going to do. I'd be all right with it, but I want Kevin Owens to stand on his own and be the only real shade of gray, you know, the only guy that's going to headbutt Vince McMahon and also the only guy that's going to, you know, he's the only person that could have heat with everybody from a storyline standpoint on that roster. He is perfect as the man on his own. And as I can see him, obviously, with Sami Zayn, you want to do one tag match or something like that along the way, cool. But I think as we go into fall and we go into the new season and all that sort of stuff, I like a refreshed, angry, competitive Kevin Owens to be again to not be tied down with Sami Zayn and in a team or anything else not to say I wouldn't want you know there could be worse things in the world than that team but they need single stars and they need people to stand out and Kevin Owens to me is that guy and not to say that Kevin <laughs> Sami Zayn's going to weigh him down but you know to be honest you know there's a certain level for Zayn and I like him tied in frankly with Roman Reigns so we'll see what happens there but I kind of like that as far as I was, though, why does the G1 even need a briefcase? Shouldn't winning guarantee a spot in the... Mi- yes! That's Okada's point! And my point! Yeah, used to. You win the G1, you're in the main event of the Tokyo Dome. Just like in the old days, you won the Royal Rumble, you were guaranteed the main event at WrestleMania. Now, I think everybody, like all us old people, we watch the Royal Rumble because we always watched it and it's fun. But nobody goes into the Royal Rumble and is excited like when it begins and when it's over about who's going to win because it doesn't matter. It does not matter who wins the Royal Rumble because if you win the Royal Rumble, you may headline WrestleMania. You may not headline WrestleMania. And we have two days of WrestleMania, so someone's going to headline WrestleMania not having won the Royal Rumble. So it doesn't matter. It's pro wrestling. You can do nonsense. It's okay to do nonsense sometimes, even with, you know, a briefcase or a stipulation or whatever, every once in a while. But we've gotten away from, like you mentioned, does the Royal Rumble mean what it used to mean? No. Does winning money in the bank mean what it used to mean? No. Were we getting into territory with Gato with the briefcase and with the fact that you can defend this right that... You know, maybe the old thing should be new again, which is he wins the big match. I'm going to the Dome on the 4th. If somebody wants to try to hurt me along the way to take me out, that's fine. But I'm going to be there for that title match. I like that. And to me, yeah, it does make the G1 mean more. And come next year, when we have the possibilities of the Andrades, the Brian Danielsons, the Claudios, the... Whoever, Jay Lethals, whoever you want to say could be possibly in that tournament. Yeah, I kind of, this is a perfect time. This was the perfect time for them, in my opinion, to try something new with the blocks and all that stuff. And I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I get why they did it this year. But come next year, now it's time to bring it back. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. I'm going to talk about SmackDown and Rampage. There was not a lot to talk about on Rampage. Cloudy did a promo, open challenge for next week, and Dustin accepted. So that's going to be coming up on next week's show. Swerve in Our Glory beat Private Party. They retain the tag team titles. They, uh, yeah, fist bumped afterwards, and that was it. They won. It was a good match, but uh, it was just a match. Hook and old Zach Clayton. The reality, Zach Clayton. The match started, the bell rang, Hook choked him out immediately. That was the end of that. Then uh, Angelo Parker demanded a championship match, I guess, for next week, which hopefully will go longer than 10 seconds. Then, because the match went so short, we had Buddy Matthews in his first singles match on AEW, I think somebody said since like February or something like that, he beat Serpentigo in like 10 seconds, killed him. And then uh, we had Miro showing up, and he absolutely obliterated Malachi and uh, left him for dead. So he is coming after the House of Black. Finally, after all these months, he's making his move. I don't know if I like that. 
Miro was becoming 97 Sting. It's like he was so incredibly over and you never see him wrestle. He just comes out, says something. It's amazing. And most cases, I would actually hate a build to a match and involvement like this. But Miro has been so great. The whole deal with the pagan, all of this stuff, always mentioning his wife like... It's in some ways baffling. There's not, you know, if somebody were to walk in and you go, well, explain all this to me and how it works in wrestling. It would be kind of difficult to with what's going on with him. But it's been amazing. And now I actually want to see him face off against Malachi Black. And it's got nothing to do with professional wrestling at all. It has got 100%. And it's the lie. It's got nothing to do with in the ring at all. It's got 100% to do with these characters and how they've been talking to each other. And what, in theory, they're representing. Athena beat Penelope Ford, and uh, it was fine. Finish looked awesome. They shot it great. And then afterwards, uh, Jade Cargill came out and destroyed Athena's wings. <laughs> I don't think I watched Jericho the show. Was I the watched right the guy. show every single week. Okay, and apparently she's had these wings since day one. <laughs> This was the first time they ever made a big deal about the wings. And then the wings get destroyed. <laughs> and Jericho losing it in that Jericho worked announcer Dude. voice. So like, she made him at home. God oh my bless God. him. Like, it was the worst thing in the world. God bless him for trying. <laughs> oh, come on. Why I don't know. God's I don't name. Know if he was trying his more, made it a mockery even more than it was. Well, he wasn't trying to make it a mockery, but I think he, <laughs> somebody probably figured out they're destroying the wings this week. What wings? Oh, those wings? Oh, they're she special? She hasn't been on TV. When's the last time she's been on TV with those wings in the ring, displaying them for everybody as if it's a it's, big part of her ring gear? Somebody, it's been like a month or so. Well, somebody Jeez. had the stats, and it's been a while since she'd been on TV with the yeah. wings. Anyway, they broke they just, her wings. Sometimes they do things to do things. Sometimes it works out. Like, they had a Texas death. Was it, was it the... Was it the Dustin and Cody, they seem to get to things sometimes quickly, but it's okay when it ends up working itself out. Like, when it comes to some of these gimmick matches, I think they've burned through a lot of things. This was a great example of, and there have been several times where something has not been driven home on TV enough that is going to matter, and then they go with something like this where it's like... Why should anybody care? Why should I have a, a invested interest into this thing that these bad guys who are kind of cool anyway are doing to this woman? Then we had the best friends meeting the Trustbusters. Good main event. Best friends. Great. Trustbusters did a good job. Even, even old Harlan. He does no know. more than he needs to do. He goes in there. He's big. And then Ari Daivari does all the work. And Slim J. Slim J was way better than I expected. He fit right in in this match. He was totally fine. And, of course, they lost. But uh, you know, Slim J's not whining and crying about none of his finishing moves working. He's been in this game for just as long as you have, and he's out there looking fresh and as sharp as ever. Yeah, well, you, you wait until all that weekend, brother. You'll see sharp. And uh, that was Rampage. Yeah, it's going to be a blade. Watch out of that GCW side of that locker room. Stay on the BLP side. That was the uh, Rampage show. Then... <laughs> yes bro i survived nick gage brother you survived... i never saw i never saw wait you in the second. ring with nick gage wait a second wait a second backstage maybe with nick gage i wouldn't get in the ring with nick gage i wouldn't be that foolhardy and let me tell you something the only reason well, you i was that brave is because he let you oh get out of here yeah tom certainly didn't help it's one of the reasons well, we're having this match well he was tied anyway. up with you, you're really denigrating uh, Mr. Yeah, I got to get through SmackDown here, bro. Go ahead. Ronda Rousey did a segment. Now she's Steve Austin in like 1998. I thought you were going through this with Tom. She, she's suspended and fined, but uh, she comes out of the ring. Place goes crazy for her. She beats up more security, and uh, they just love to Ronda Rousey. She's, Best thing she can do. She's apparently going to be feuding with Adam Pearce or something. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> well. Then we had Toxic Attraction versus Natty. And Sonia. Apologize to Zoe. For what? Because you said she and Nikita would be far worse to have in there than Toxic no, Attraction. No, I and didn't. And I said I they said, should not be seen on the main roster yet. You're deaf and annoying. Listen, 
But don't I wait, said, wait a second. That's what, no, that's I what you said, said. If you're going to have a team from NXT in storyline, it doesn't make any sense that two random people who have never had a match together as a team in their lives are in the tournament, yet the former tag team champions can't get into this tournament. That's what I said. I've because also never, never said a negative word about Zoe Stark. I'm the one who wanted Zoe Stark to win the women's title, and I said she's one of the best workers they've got. So I don't want to hear it. No, I don't want to hear it from you. Now the Look, match you, sucked. They, they, because they shouldn't be on the main roster, that was the whole point of that. And they do things where they showcase people every once in a while. And that's what they're planning on doing with Nikita Lyons. Although the incompetence on that side of the ledger, heard a lot about AEWs, but we can't forget some of the incompetent stories we've heard about WWE recently, including Nikita Lyons not being even able to get into Canada yes. when that was a planned out thing. That was ridiculous. Okay. To have Zoe Stark there, as opposed to Toxic Attraction, because they shouldn't have been seen Dude, on TV. Listen, yet. this match was bad, and Gigi Dolan had a horrible night. She was horrible in this match. God bless her. But I cannot imagine that Nikita Lyons would be better. She would have been as bad no. or worse. She would have did that big butt Gigi cannonball. She would have been the big butt cannonball. But you figure Zoe would have did more of the work, which honestly for Natalia probably would have been kind of nice. The point is, this match was bad. It was a bad match, and yeah, uh, and then Toxic Traction won. Well, so they're allegedly moving on in this tournament. Then we had Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns in a backstage segment, which I talked about earlier. It was awesome. We had maximum male models in the ring, hit row, interrupted, beat him up, and then did a <laughs> long performance. And I was waiting. What's Okay, what's this leading to? What's this leading to? What's this leading to? Nothing. They did a long performance. If you liked it, great. <laughs> it's leading to Max Dupree probably getting slammed around by... Uh... By the big man there, AJ Francis. So <laughs> that's a, now that's a we wanted new tag teams. We've got new tag teams, and that certainly is a new feud. We had the five way: Sheamus beat Sami Zayn, Happy Corbin, Madcap Moss, and Ricochet. This match was great. It's the best SmackDown match in a long time, and Sheamus won. So it is Sheamus versus Gunther in the battle of the behemoths to steal a line from Chris Jericho. These two behemoths. We'll be facing off at Clash at the Castle. Clubberin. Love it. We had a Viking funeral for the New Day oh, with a God. cameo from uh, Sarah Logan, which I don't Jeez. think means anything, but she was there. <laughs> None of this means anything. Then we had Liv Morgan beating Shotzi. Oh, God. And uh, when it was over, Shayna Baszler attacks Morgan, and uh, she beats her up because they're facing off at the pay-per-view. And I actually like this. She goes to break her arm. She steps on the wrist. She's about to stomp the elbow. And then she says, if I break your arm, I can't fight for the title at the castle. So instead, instead of stomping her arm, she boots her in the head and then stands. She was awesome. Oh, my God. She yeah, was that, awesome in this segment. That, that second that Liv pulled back to look, and then she just boots her right upside the head. But again, Liv Morgan is sitting there crying for her life with tears coming out of her eyes with a body part about to be broken. Again, I, I know you got to do a little of this, but is this really the best thing for Liv Morgan leading into that match? Well, she's going to win, so I don't think it matters. Well, yeah. Then we had the Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, face-to-face. -face. And, uh, you know, one of the things, uh, there's a lot of things that are getting better with WWE, but one of the things that continues to just mightily, mightily suck is their horrible, horrible camera work and their horrible uh, directing of these segments. So... The segment itself, like, Roman was good, and Drew was good, and then we have the big spot at the end, where they get in this big brawl, and Drew McIntyre is going to go for the Claymore. And so, you know, they think we're dumb, still, even with Vince Khan, and so he's going to go for the Claymore, and so they zoom in as tight as humanly possible on him, because they don't want you to know that someone's going to get in the ring. But every time they zoom in tight on someone, you know that's because someone's going to get in the ring. So you know Sammy's going to be there. So Drew goes to do the kick, and, of course, he hits Sammy. Camera totally misses it. So now, you know, Roman Reigns decides that he's going to go for the spear on Drew McIntyre. And he goes for the spear, and he gets claymored, and the camera missed it. The two spots you missed! 
because you have to try to do all of this hocus pocus to fool the marks when in reality we're not that stupid we know what's going on just film the action and bro listen listen i don't want to hear this crap that i hear from the stand up for w i'm sure everyone's all happy now that i'm mad at wwe again i don't want to hear this crap from the stand up from wwe geeks that's like oh well bro they got to cut the camera because it's hd you're gonna see all bro AW's HD. Impact is HD. New Japan is HD. MLW is HD. Dude, everybody shoots in HD. And I don't see everybody missing everything by a mile in those other promotions. You know who I see missing stuff by a mile still is people in WWE. Bro, stop with the camera cutting. It sucks. It absolutely sucks and it ruins the show. Other than that, it was good. But God, I hate, I hate. I and all I have to hear is, I, I, I hear from people who are like, oh, you know, this AEW, they got such amateur production. They'll never be as good as WWE. It's mm -hmm. like, bro, I know it's bright and colorful. Your production sucks. I can't see what's going on. You miss the action most of the time. There were two big spots in the main event segment. You missed them because you're busy switching the cameras. God. And there's an easy fix for that, which is uh, don't do that. As you just mentioned, it's really that simple. And I always wonder, it's like, are we really in the minority on that? Do they have focus groups for WWE and for for NBC Universal that brings people in and go, I like this because I didn't like seeing the, you know, there was too much light or whatever somebody would say. Like, I maybe we're in the minority here and they really think this, that that looks great, but it looks like crap. And more often than not, you, because of all of this manic late 90s style MTV BS cutting that was cutting edge then and it, in this scenario all it does is cause you to miss action it doesn't make any sense to me and when you have a headset and people walking watching backstage on hd monitors if you did miss something tell the ref tell them to do it again tell them to call an audible then do it don't do all the camera cuts back in a moment observer live oh you're right boss ah. Well, one thing after another. I know it. I, some Hard people are mad that. that Vinny did a lame review of Rampage yesterday. Which, Why? by the way, I did what my best to uh, to salvage that review and, and make the show the review exciting. So don't get mad at me about it. But then uh, someone on the board's like, imagine saying that Rampage was boring and then liking SmackDown. It's like, did you watch SmackDown? Yeah. Bro, if you watch SmackDown, you wouldn't post that. Like... I know some of you are angry and you're still upset about it, but like, if you, I don't know. Maybe it was Penelope Ford's uncle or something that's uh, expressing this opinion. But look, there's no reason to overblow something. There is plenty of conversation to be had, and if there's not a lot to review about a show, then maybe you just review what really needs to matter about a show. You move on to the next one, then you move on to questions and other things like that, which is, I'm sure, that you did on the Brian, Vinny, and Craig show. Honestly, have I ever been unfair in my reviews about any show? Have I? <laughs> I watch all of these shows, I'm telling you. Well, so you Don't talk not a lot watch about the show shows. and then yell at me about it. I, look, you've had a lot of what do you mean, horrible yes. opinions. Oh, is this about NXT 2.0? Just because I could, like some of the stuff on the show? How dare you like something on NXT 2.0, Brian? Golly. That's not Tiffany Stratton. I don't get it myself, but, you know, it's fine. Disgusted. Mm. I, never, I never thought the day would come. But here it is. But you know I what? Used to like scoops the too, sun by the way. will. Yeah, that was another one. I never, I never thought the day would come where people wouldn't want backstage scoops about wrestling. But now they just want to they want to put the blinders on and not hear about what's going on. They just want to enjoy the shows. Well, anyway, we're out of time. I'm going to enjoy Raw tonight. I am. And I'll talk about it tomorrow. Wrestling Observer Live.